These koalas are clinging on to life, desperately dehydrated with burnt paws, and it's a rush to treat them before another fire front comes in. Yeah, so we don't have any burns to the eyes. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot of singeing of the fur and a little burn on the chin. Around 25,000 koalas are thought to have died in the bushfires on Kangaroo Island. That's half the population here. Dozens of animals are being brought into the wildlife centre, which set up an emergency triage area. Can you see the colour of his eyes yeah. here? They're white. So he, he actually can't see at all. So he's got no, no menace response there. Um, and unfortunately, when, when that happens, their prognosis is really poor yep. because they, they, they can't look after themselves. Sometimes their vision never <laughs> yep. comes back. The decision is taken to euthanize the wallaby. For every one animal that comes in here, about a hundred have died. Sam Mitchell's done this too many times over the past few weeks. And you, and you got that machine down there and the bucket's full and you're tipping them in a hole, it's, uh, yeah, it gets to you. The fires are creeping closer to the wildlife centre, so the army's moved in its muscle to clear as much of the tinder dry brush as possible. The centre's inundated with injured animals, and as fast as they're building pens for them to give them time to recover, more keep coming in. Even though everyone here knows the centre lies in the path of the wall of fire. But Sam, who owns the centre, is determined to stay and protect his animals and the new injured residents they're caring for, most of whom cannot easily be relocated. You're just we'll going to have to sit it out? Yeah, well, defend. Mm -hmm. Defend or, um, yeah, don't want to burn, but, yeah, nothing we can do. This teddy's got arms in the way, doesn't it, honey? The fires may well have changed the island forever. <coughs> Sam's wife, Dana, is now busy trying to feed and build up some of the orphans left behind and now living in their front room. She's drafted in her father and volunteers, but as well as the impact on Australia's better known wildlife, there are grave concerns that at least two other species, unique to Kangaroo Island, may have been wiped out. Because they're coming off the fire grounds, um, there may have not had feed for a couple of days, like a lot of the adults coming in. Um, the second they come in, the first thing they want to do is eat. Hey, Bob. They're evacuating Kandana now. Yep. So if you guys have got to go to go, because remember they're going to close the roads. Yep. Yep. So, yep. <clears throat> the winds are picking up, but no one knows exactly which way they'll blow. There are multiple fires forming an arc around the wildlife centre and closing in. One of the next door farms is already on fire and the smoke and flames are gaining ground on the livestock. Take I've got no. all the joeys and that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Dana decides she has to take the couple's little boy out of the danger zone to safety. Love you. It's an emotional goodbye. He's scared of me, Dan. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to Some of the orphan animals are also packed into the departing vehicles. Water bombers and plane spotters fly overhead constantly, relaying the latest information on the fire movement, and it doesn't look good. As you can tell, we are going to stay here, mm, yep. um, and we're going to try our best to keep everything safe. Well, there's no guarantee we can do that. So it's up to you if you want to stay with us or if you want to go. If you want to go, you need to go right now. We take their advice and head on out, but the fires have already crossed the last road to safety, with flames on either side. We leave behind the wildlife centre carers, who have a frightening 12 hours ahead of them, and hundreds of animals depending on them. Alex Crawford, Sky News, on Kangaroo Island, Australia.